Okay, so um, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the Translation Manchester Monthly Seminar Series. Um, my name is Fiona Foster, not Translation Manchester, and I help manage um, Translation Manchester along with Alessandro, who is also here on the call. Um, so this seminar series has been designed to feature all the partners of the Translation Manchester Research Network. We currently have over 60 partners who represent various facilities and institutions around both the university, the NHS and other partners who can all help support translational research. And you can find all the details on all our partners in our updated booklet. So there is the information on our booklet and Alessandro will nicely put the link into the chat for me. Um, so yeah, all the information can be found there. And each month, two of our partners present how they can help your research in our seminar series. And we record these seminars and they will be available for you to watch on our YouTube channel. And the link will also be provided in the chat. So just before we start, I'd just like to go over some Zoom etiquette. Um, it would be great if you could keep yourself on mute and your camera off during the presentations, just so we don't distract our great speakers. Um, please use the chat function in order to ask any questions and we'll do all the questions at the end. Um, and if you can stay online at the end of both presentations, we do have a short Zoom poll, which we would like you to complete. Um, and so without further ado, I'm going to hand over to our first speaker of the day, Alicia, and she's from the Jeffrey Jefferson Brain Research Center. And she's going to talk about the work that Jeff is doing in translating research into healthcare outcomes for people with neurological diseases, such as tumors, stroke, and dementia. Over to you, Alicia. Thank you. Thank you very much for the introduction. Um, so thank you for the slides as well. Um, so my name is Alicia. I am the Centre Manager of the Jeffrey Jefferson Brain Research Centre, or as we like to call it, the Jeff. Um, I feel like that's a bit more friendly. Um, so we're a joint venture across the University of Manchester, Manchester Academic Health Science Centre and the Northern Care Alliance. And we also work in partnership with Manchester Cancer Research Centre, the Christie and the Royal Manchester Children's Hospital. Um, if we can just go to the next slide. So the centre was named in honour of Professor Sir Geoffrey Jefferson, who you can see in that first picture there. And he was the UK's first professor of neurosurgery at the University of Manchester. And he was also the first chair of the Medical Research Council Clinical Research Board. Um, professor Sir Geoffrey Jefferson worked at both Salford Royal and Manchester Royal Infirmary in the 1920s and 30s. So we felt like that was a sufficient, you know, a very good name for our centre. And we want to kind of live up to those expectations. And um, below that picture, you can see our two co-directors, very smiley in these pictures. So Professor Andy King and Professor Stuart Allen, who I'm sure many of you know. And then there is also a slightly elongated photo of myself there as well. If we just go on to the next slide. Um, so a little bit about the centre. So our vision is to very much be a patient focused and patient driven centre for translational brain research. We aim to combine the outstanding discovery science and experimental medicine to translate our research into healthcare benefit. Um, and our aim is to discover and develop new treatments and implement optimal care pathways that provide better outcomes and transform the lives of patients. What we're looking to do is to rapidly translate from kind of bench to bedside. Um, we want to allow that patient impact and improve patient care at the end of the research pathway. Um, and we aim to do that relatively quickly and cover that whole translational pathway. Um, next slide. So we've got four main centre strategic objectives, um, and those are to create an, an identity for neuroscience research in Manchester. We want to become a bit of a home of neuroscience research um, within Manchester and to be you know, nationally and internationally leading in the research that we do. Um, we aim to be patient driven and patient led, um, ensuring the needs of the patients are at the heart of what we do. So we really want our research agenda to be driven by patient need. Um, what is important to them and how can we look at rapidly translating that research? Um, we, we do an awful lot of research in Manchester and I think it's really important to really consider what, what is going to be of the most benefit to patients because sometimes they identify areas that maybe we aren't 
providing enough research in or that we haven't looked into. Um, so their voice is really, really important to us. Um, we want to provide a forum for clinical and academic researchers to establish specific themes that facilitate rapid translation of research from bench to bedside. So we'll come on to the themes that we have currently within the GEF and we are looking to expand those. Um, but we also want to provide that collaborative environment for academics and clinicians um, to really come together there. Um, and we also want to provide enabling core infrastructure to increase research output and excellence. The research pathway can be tricky sometimes and we want to make that as easy and as simple as possible for researchers, clinical researchers and academic researchers. Next slide. Um, so we're just looking at our current, um, current structure here at the moment. So our themes are stroke and dementia, brain tumours and Parkinson's disease. Then we have those cross cutting, so inflammation, pathology, imaging and rehabilitation. And these themes are continuously developing and we are here to kind of provide that support with grant applications, ethics applications and the research setup process um, within those themes. Next slide, please. Um, so how can we support you? So I think one of the main things that we are looking to do is to provide that collaborative environment. So across the translational pathway, we want to identify and provide access to clinicians um, and to patient samples and data. And I think that's probably what's of most importance um, to the guys that are doing the academic kind of discovery science um, is that we can help identify clinicians um, or we can try and provide access to those patient samples. Um, and I think one of the greatest things that we've provided over the, si the past six months is that ability for the basic science and clinicians to collaborate um, really seamlessly. And it has strengthened grant applications and really allowed for more rapid translation from bench coming through to bedside. Um, we provide a profile, so it does provide a bit of a home um, and provides you profiles for submitting those grants and getting your research projects up and running. Um, and again, the infrastructure. So we want to support you to identify kind of supporting infrastructure that you may require at any point within your um, project's lifetime. We know that setting up a research project can be tricky um, and we're here to kind of identify or to provide the knowledge and expertise um, in how you can go about doing that. Um, next slide. So just a final slide, um, my contact details are on here. Um, if you have any questions or queries or would like to contact me or feel that we may be able to help with your research project at all. Um, I've also popped our Centre Administrator Jill on there. And if anyone wants to sign up to our newsletter, um, there is also our generic inbox there, which you can provide your details and sign up to the newsletter. Um, we are also on Twitter um, with the GJ Brain Research handle, um, and you are welcome to contact me or the generic inbox to provide any assistance. Um, so that was just a really brief overview of the centre, um, and I hope you found that useful and informative. Great. Thanks, Alicia. Did you want to take questions now or would you like to do it at the end with Kat? I'm uh, happy to take questions. No, yeah. I was just going to say, how, how do you currently integrate with other institutes that exist within the university structure? So linking, you know, the NCA, so the Northern Care Alliance with the university. Yeah, so I think, you know, it's, it's very much we're a work in progress. We try and link in across all areas where we can. We have a lot of input um, from um, Manchester MCRC um, and they've been very helpful um, recently in kind of our comms and marketing. Um, and we have kind of links through um, the PIs within our themes as well to the University of Manchester. Um, but we are based at Northern Caroline, so we kind of provide that cross, cross cover. Okay, cool. Thank you very much. Um, are there any other questions? I'll stop sharing my screen so I can see if there's anything. There's a no, question in the chat, Fiona. <clears throat> okay. From Kate uh, is asking Alicia, what PPI arrangements do you have within the centre? 
Thank you. Great question. Um, so we have been doing a bit of a scoping exercise recently of kind of PPI input, because obviously one of our main points of the centre is to be patient led and patient driven. And obviously you can't do that without patient input. Um, so we've had quite a big scoping exercise go on um, through our mask domain and um, looking at what what is existing out there already, because we don't want to reinvent the wheel. Um, but also, how do those groups work and how do they function? Um, so we do have um, some PPI input through um, Kate Woodward Knott, who really helps us with our PPI. Um, and we are just currently in the process of organising and facilitating some patient days um, where we'll involve them. The big vision for the future is to have a transdiagnostic um, PPI panel for the GEF, um, where we would kind of collaborate with them frequently and we would have a member on our board. Um, and also we would have frequent meetings where we can look at our research agenda and you know, just really make sure that that's of key importance. I think at the moment we are still kind of finishing our scope and exercises to what's out there and trying to link in with what is kind of existing already. Um, and there is a lot across Manchester. There's a lot of different panels that exist. Um, and some of them do only exist study specifically. And I think that's what we found quite difficult is, are there any panels that exist outside of just study specific? Um, so it's about linking in with those and, and really driving that forward. Um, and we are at a point now where we do need that PPIE input to say that we are, you know, really patient led and patient driven. And um, so, yeah, I think the patient public days will um, will really um, bring that forward as well. Um, if you want to contact me offline, because I work with um, quite a lot of people at the Christie who do brain tumor okay. research, we've got a big stand up to cancer uh, research program, and obviously that has a big patient um, involvement patient advocacy element to the program um, and I haven't particularly um, come across you in, in this scoping exercise so if you wanted to yeah. get in touch I can at least explain it is it is quite um, you know quite um, specific to to the project that we're doing but it includes quite a lot of the patient advocacy groups and existing patients that have been treated at the Christie and at the children's hospital so and, and it, I mean that is brain tumours brain cancer so it is you know I know you're you're a broader scope than that but more than happy if you want to to drop me a line that's amazing thank you so much Kate no problem thanks Kate thanks Alicia so we're going to hand thanks. over to our second speaker for today and in a um, change to the advertised speaker we do have Kat here from the um, NIH um, CRN who will be speaking to us today um, she's going to be telling us about how they can support research studies in the NHS and the wider social and healthcare environments. Over to you, Kat. Hello, everybody. Thank you very much for um, inviting the CRN along today um, to let us tell you a little bit about what we do here at the Clinical Research Network. So the Clinical Research Network is based in City Labs in Greater Manchester. Uh, we're hosted by MFT. Um, and our core visions and values um, are to ensure that we are providing relevant research um, ensuring that the Greater Manchester population is inclusive um, in this research and to ensure that we all have an exceptional experience um, when participating in research across Greater Manchester. So our mission as a clinical research network is to support research to make patients and the NHS better. Um, the clinical research network is the research arm of NHS and social care settings. So we facilitate research delivery um, within the NHS and non-NHS settings, um, supporting both academic and commercial studies. Um, and our key aim is to ensure that we provide unique opportunities for our patient population and um, to help them engage in groundbreaking research to essentially make their lives as um, you know better. Um, and increase the, the health and wealth of the population is the NIHR's mission statement. So um, we are one of 15 local clinical research networks here in Greater Manchester um, and we deliver research across 30 different clinical specialty areas which you can see here um, on, on the right of, of the screen. Um, the NIHR is the largest funder of health and social care research um, talk a little bit more about funding opportunities a little bit um, later on. 
The Great Manchester Clinical Research Network serves a population of almost 3 million um, participants across our region. Um, we support delivery of research across 14 different NHS trusts, um, 11 clinical commissioning groups. Um, we support more than 500 GP practices and pharmacies, and we also support research out in non-NHS settings, so out in the community, um, in schools, um, prisons, one of the big areas that we've worked in um, over the last 12 to 18 months has been in the community to deliver COVID vaccine um, research studies. So one of the um, service offerings that the Clinical Research Network offers is a free of charge study support service, um, which will enable researchers to plan, set up and deliver high quality research within the NHS and also within wider health and social care environments. Um, so to enable students, we, we provide support for researchers, um, academics, clinicians, um, as well as the life sciences industry. And we're able to advise on things like um, protocols, uh, regulatory advice, any kind of training and funding um, guidance that might be needed, um, as well as looking at the like costing element of, of research studies. Um, and we can help you with site identification and kind of signpost you to any, any relevant um, partners that we might be working with. So there are six key elements um, with the study support service that we offer. So we take you right the way through from the early, um, early part of your research study through early contact and engagement. And we will see your study right the way through the life cycle, um, through to performance monitoring to ensure that you recruit to time and target. Um, and you've got that study-wide oversight. Um, so we, we can help with all aspects of your research study. The Clinical Research Network um, provides the, it has a direct delivery team to provide infrastructure um, for recruitment into studies across Greater Manchester. Um, so we have a number of research nurses within our direct delivery team research practitioners and clinical trial administrators. Um, we're able to work flexibly and out of hours, weekends, etc., which um, we utilised during the uh, pandemic when we were recruiting to vaccine studies, when we were recruiting to very, very early um, studies around COVID, um, providing support at home, like for home visits, as well as those that will take part that take place in um secondary care or, or primary care settings um so yes the, the last sort of 12 to 18 months in terms of delivery has obviously been a, a little bit different for us in terms of ways of working we also provide um support for dedicated research teams across all of our research active sites in Greater Manchester, so whether that be um, primary or, or secondary care, we've got dedicated research teams that we support in, in those sites as well. We provide some funding opportunities, so we've got a funding call out at the moment with a deadline of the 18th of February um, that's to support the delivery of health and social care research in Greater Manchester, East Cheshire and East Lancashire. Um, it's a strategic funding call that will be made available for the next financial year um, in order to support proposals um, to enhance local research delivery. So it will focus on our three key themes um, of relevant research, inclusive involvement and exceptional experience. So if anybody does have any project proposals that they would like to talk about um, in, in further detail, then you know, please do get in touch and I'll share my contact details at the end. Um, but there's also a link here as well to the Google form for, for those applications. Um, and there's more information on the NIHR web pages as well about specific NIHR funding opportunities that are currently available. 
As a clinical research network, we work in collaboration with a number of different organisations. Um, so we work across um, industry um, with SMEs, um, various char charities, universities, um, other partners at Alderley Park, um, Department of International Trade. So essentially any, any study that we can help get off the ground and place in the most appropriate area across Greater Manchester. We have access to a number of different tools to help your research project um, and help you find the, the most appropriate participants. So we work with an organisation um, called Research for the Future, which is a NIHR CRN initiative, which will help recruit NI to NIHR studies um, using a consent for approach model. So there are specific cohorts for uh, research for the future um, into diabetes, respiratory disease, heart disease, kidney disease, and most recently into coronavirus, um, which will help those participants who want to be involved in research um, get access to those research studies. And we also have access to a um, search, find and contact recruitment system called Farsight, um, which we work in collaboration with Northwest Health to deliver. Um, so that's a tool that, can, that GPs can use to recruit their patients onto research studies within primary care. Um, and it, it preserves confidentiality. So for a, a GP um, and, and patient, um, you know, they've, they've got that extra confidence that, that their data will remain confidential. We have a communications and PPI team um, dedicated to raising the profile of clinical research across Greater Manchester. Um, we promote the importance of research with our local service providers um, to enable the access for our participants. Um, and we, you know, we are represented at a number of events across the network, and we also help to arrange various um, networking events across Greater Manchester as well. So this is just a little bit of information about the Clinical Research Network and what we do in Greater Manchester. So. In the past financial year, we recruited to 581 studies across the network um, and delivered nearly 82,000 recruits, which was a phenomenal number of participants. Um, so just over half of our studies are interventional um, and 46% of them observational. Um, in terms of recruitment to commercial studies, we recruited to 146 studies and just less than 4,000 patients. So it really was a phenomenal year um, last year in terms of raising that awareness to the public um, and getting them on, on board with the delivery of clinical research in Manchester. Thank you very much um, for, for listening. Um, these are our contact details on here um, and I will can share the slides afterwards if, if you think that would be helpful. Um, but yeah, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Kat. That was a very informative uh, uh, talk. Uh, thank you for presenting. If you have any questions for Kat or Alicia, uh, please post them in the chat or just raise your hand. So we've got uh, time we're running uh, ahead of time actually today. Uh, I, I have a question for both of you actually. I'll start with Kat uh, perhaps. Um, you mentioned this study uh, support service which is free of charge which is always mm -hmm. great. Um, could you expand a little bit more about around the eligibility for that so that can anyone access it for example our academics at the university and yes. also uh, yes, can, yeah. yeah so and anyone can access um the study support service provided that the intention um, would be to try and get your study onto the NIHR portfolio once you've kind of established you, you, that you have a study um, to move forward with. So yeah, any if, if you've got the intention to put it onto the portfolio, then anyone can have access. So that's great. So, so 
but perhaps you know to access um uh, also to get support and help in putting together an ihr uh, bids i suppose and that's brings me quite well in the second part of my question which is how mature does a proposal need to be to come to you for help uh, do you accept people coming with just an idea and wanting connection and you know helping setting it up or do you prefer people just coming with a proposal almost ready to go and you provide the final advice no no absolutely anybody can come at any stage um to the crn it might well be that we are able to signpost you to the most relevant um, organisation, the partner organisation that we work with, to help enable um, the development of that proposal. Um, or it might be if you're at a point where it is that little bit more mature, then we can kind of jump in and, and help straight away. So from our um, perspective, yeah, the, the earlier, the better. Um, if, if you want support from us, that's absolutely fine. Fantastic. And the way to get that support is to email that inbox that was in your last slide. Yeah, yeah. Yes. So um, our generic email is, is the one that is manned all day, every day. Um, there's a number of people manning it. So it means that your email, your query will get directed to the most appropriate member of the team. Um, so that could be um, through either our non-commercial or commercial team or one of our research delivery managers. Great, fantastic. Uh, if you have any other question for Kat, please put them in the chat. We've got uh, one now. Uh, it says, could we expect the same services are available at the CRN in other regions? So is there any specific C CRN GM? So are the services you provide in specific to Greater Manchester, or are they available also in other regions? They are indeed, yes. Yeah. So Greater Manchester is one of the 15 clinical research networks um, and the study support service offering was developed so that each one of the 15 clinical research networks was offering the same um, level of support across the board. So yeah. Fantastic. Thank you for that. Uh, I've got another question. I don't know if you are the best person to answer this, to be honest. Maybe you can direct us to who the person is. You know, you mentioned research the future, which is for the future, which is a great initiative uh, to, you know, to even to find patients to then bring into your own research. So do you have any details on what the process is for academics to access those people that have consented to be approached? Um, is it coming to you or is there a specific team? Yeah, so there's a specific team for research for the future um, and they can be contacted directly um, in terms of the next steps of, of making um, that connection. Yeah, so I can I can get hold of the email address and post it in the chat if yeah, that helps. That'd be great. I think that'd be very useful because we do get requests of people looking for patients in their area and then, you know, knowing that there is that resources uh, yeah so this um so research for the future is a great initiative um in in terms of, of the consent for approach because these participants have actively signed up to participate in research so you've kind of over, you've overcome the first hurdle um because these these people actually want to participate and they're you know they're actively seeking um studies to improve their, their own health good good well, if there is any other question for cat please put them in the chat i might go back to alicia and ask you a question if they're still on the call uh, alicia hi <laughs> um, hello i just thought about it when i was listening to the other talk as well you mentioned access to patient um as well and patient samples and data uh, which is also relevant to what we just mentioned so what's the process in your case if some academic wants to you know, come to you and ask for uh, tissues or patient data? Yep. So it very much depends on what type of tissue and data they are looking for. Um, but we do have a established research collections through NCA um, called NCARP um, through the bio repository. And there was also the brain bank. So very much depends what they're looking for, but more than welcome to come to me with any information. And I can certainly signpost them in the right direction or get the ball rolling for them if it's a matter of an um, NCARC application. So we can certainly talk them through that. Fantastic, thank you, uh, Alicia. And also Kat for posting the Research for the Future link into, them, into the chat. 
Right, if there is no further question for uh, Kat and Alicia, I think we can probably uh, almost close the event. We need a couple of more minutes of your time, if that's okay, uh, because we have a poll that we normally launch just to gather a little bit of feedback on this series of events and how to improve it going forward. So you should get a couple of questions um, on your screen now. You might need to scroll because there is four of them. So if you could complete it before leaving, uh, that would be uh, great for us. So I just want to thank again both um, Kat and Alicia and obviously Fiona for starting the event, for coming to talk to us today. Uh, we have a seminar planned for next month as well. Uh, it will be on the 24th of February at 1 p.m., so same time. I think Fiona might be already posting the link in the chat. And we'll have uh, Emma Gowen talking about autism at Manchester and Kerry Jones presenting for the Manchester Institute for Collaborative Research on Aging. So I'll see you all next month, hopefully, and I'll thank again the speaker for coming to um, talk about their organization today. Thank you very much. Bye.